THSC has been encouraging, equipping, and advocating homeschooled families for 35 years. We have worked to pass legislation to require Texas State Colleges to treat homeschoolers equitably and fairly for admission. We've passed legislation forcing the public schools to allow homeschoolers to do PSAT testing at their local school. And we've passed legislation requiring community colleges to allow homeschools to do dual credit classes in their, in their schools as well. In fact, we've also passed legislation requiring the state of Texas to allow homeschoolers to do parent-taught driver education. I will say for 35 years, the public school lobby has been totally opposed to homeschooling, and they continue to be today. Today, we have a, we're looking at the UIL Equal Access Bill. That bill is passed the House, and as I record this, I've just learned that it's just passed out of the committee in the Senate. And yet, uh, it, we're not surprised to see the total public school lobby, the teacher unions, the administrators, the school boards, and even the PTA oppose this legislation. And let me just point out that this legislation makes it possible for the homeschoolers to participate, but the local public school gets to make that decision instead of UIL saying, no, they can't participate. It's permissive in terms of the school districts, and they still oppose that legislation. So here's what's amazing. Uh, I get legislators all the time who say to me, Tim, why are all these homeschoolers opposing the right of other parents to make a decision that does not impact them? That is a great question. And let me just see if I can articulate some of those, some of those reasons. Probably the number one is the fear factor. There are people who are arguing, Tim, if we allow this to happen, this will result in the loss of freedom for all the homeschoolers in Texas. So I think that relates to a misunderstanding of how the legislative process works. In order for the legislature, in order for the state of Texas to take our freedom, they have to pass a bill in the House, pass a bill in the Senate, and get the governor to sign it. Now, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. And it's going to be a cold day in August before THSC allows that to happen. In fact, right now, even as we speak, we have a team in Austin of three employees and three uh, interns, and they have killed legislation. They are amending legislation to protect families, and we are also working to pass uh, the UIL bill to give families more choices in the education of their children. When legislators ask me why these people are so opposed to allowing other families the freedom to make choices for their children, uh, they often refer to the arguments that they make. And these legislators always look at the bill and say, here's the wording of the bill. Help me see what wording in this bill it endangers you or other families. Because frankly, that wording is not there. In fact, there's wording that we included in the bill that says nothing in this bill can be used to regulate the homeschoolers of Texas. So when a legislator gets these kinds of arguments that this would result in the eventual loss of our freedom, and he looks at the language of the bill, he, it leads him to the conclusion these people must be conspiracy theorists because there's nothing in the bill that actually does that. So this reminds me of the, the uh, 1980s when we had the Leaper versus Arlington case. It was a class action suit that was filed on behalf of all the homeschoolers in Texas against the Texas Education Agency and all the school districts of Texas. And we were arguing before the courts that homeschooling is and has been and should be legal in the state of Texas. The reality is we had a number of homeschoolers who were very fearful that that lit litigation would draw attention to us and it would result in the, in the loss of their freedom. It's the same argument that we hear today. And uh, in spite of that, we were not dissuaded from this litigation. We were not dissuaded from suing the state of Texas to win the freedom for all the families in Texas. And I would just say if those opponents, those fearful opponents, had been successful in derailing that litigation, the homeschooling as we know it in Texas today would not exist. But the reality is we were successful. And I just might also say that we will not be dissuaded today by opponents who are fearful but angry and calling people names and working hard to undermine 
uh, our organization and attacking people personally. We will not be dissuaded from pushing for more freedom for the families of Texas. So what about testing, people say? So that some people say, Tim, we don't like it that homeschoolers in this law are going to have to take a standardized test. So let me explain why we put that in the bill. In order for us to get this freedom for homeschool families, uh, some legislators say, Tim, homeschoolers should be required to use the same curriculum as the public school to take the STAR test. And we oppose that. We would never support uh, the state having control over a homeschool uh, curriculum or, or homeschooling. So instead, we rejected the opportunity to take the STAR test. In fact, in the Texas House, there was an amendment uh, that one of the coaches association supporters made to require homeschoolers to take the STAR test and it went down in flames, 93 to 44. So we're opposed to that. But legislators were asking the question, Tim, how do we know that these homeschoolers are making academic progress? And so our, we know that the vast majority of homeschoolers take a standardized test uh, on a regular basis, a nationally normed standardized achievement test like the Iowa Basic Skills or the California Achievement Test or the Stanford Achievement Test. So essentially we said, okay, let's just put that in the bill. Every, everybody that wants to participate as a homeschooler, you take the test, uh, the student takes the test, and they score at or above grade level. And you know, as I do, that that is not a heavy lift for a homeschooler. They have to do that every two years. And in the meantime, the parent, every reporting period, just like the teachers in the public school, reports that their child is passing. So we think that is a reasonable thing. And I would also point out, if you want to do dual, dual credit classes in Texas, at a community college, you got to go take a test. You know, so this is not uh, uncommon. Uh, we would like to see it expanded. I know there are some concerns about students who have special needs, and we hope at some point in the future to address that as well. So what about this organization that is opposing this, that is driving the opposition to this? So I've mentioned several times the, the history of the Texas Homeschool Coalition, how we have worked in all areas to uh, equip, encourage, and advocate for homeschooling families. We, we do that in the legislature. We do that in the courts. We do that with state agencies. And we do that in a number of ways to help homeschool families, to intervene for homeschool families. And this is part of what we do. And yet the organization that is driving the opposition to allowing other families to make choices for their children, the only thing, now they say they're for freedom, but here's the deal. The only thing they do, the only thing they do is oppose this bill and oppose school choice. They appear to be closely connected with the public school lobby, and uh, the reality is we believe that every family has a God-given right to raise their children as they see fit, and we will continue to work to give families more choices, and we look forward with anticipation to the legislature passing the UIL Equal Access Bill and the governor of Texas signing it into law. So the reality is, whether the UIL bill passes into law or does not, nothing will change every time the legislature meets, our freedom is at risk. THSC knows that, and that's why we have our team in Austin, why we spend tens of thousands of dollars every legislative session because we understand that one bad bill, one mix-up could result in the loss of our freedom and that is why THSC exists and as long as we exist we will not allow the freedom that families have in Texas to be uh, taken away. 35 other states and, and now as we've been working on this a 36th state has just passed legislation or rules to allow homeschoolers to participate in extracurricular activities in those in their states. In fact, some of these rules or regulations go back 50 years. And in none of those states, let me repeat that, in 35 states that have done this going back 50 years, none of those states have increased regulation on all the homeschoolers in their state. So our opponents try to say that is not true. And they point to other things. They say, Tim, prove that to us. We've got the links. Click on those links to, to look at that information, and yet they say it is not true. People say, let's talk about Alabama. Terrible stories out of Alabama. Here's the story with Alabama. They didn't pass legislation. It's not in their law. They, they allow by rule 
the equivalent organization in that state of UIL to make the rules under which homeschoolers can participate. And guess what? They change those rules. They make it more difficult. That is the reason that we are doing this via statute, not rule. And that way, if they want to change it, they've got to come to the legislature, change a bill, change it by passing a bill in the House, or passing a bill in the Senate, and getting the Texas the governor to sign that bill. We are not going to allow that ha to happen. And I hear over and over people making the argument, Tim, the homeschoolers of Texas don't want this. The reality is that is not true. Two years ago, excuse me, three years ago, we hired a professional polling firm to do a poll of all the homeschoolers in Texas. They looked at a list of 60,000 homeschool families all over Texas, and they polled these families by region across the state of Texas. And here's what they found. 77% of those families said, we would like to have the opportunity to make that decision to allow our student to participate in extracurricular activities in public school. 7% uh, said they were neutral. They didn't care one way or the other. That means 16% said we are opposed to that. So what we have today is we have a very vocal minority who is opposing the freedom of other families to make decisions for what their children could or could not be able to do. So THSC is going to continue to do what we have done for 35 years. We believe that every family has a God-given right to raise their children in a manner they see fit, and we're going to continue to defend families, whether it's in the courts, like with the Pardo case, or in the legislature, or in the Texas Supreme Court. We are going to continue to do what we do defend families, and work to give families more opportunities. Thank you for listening to this. Click on the links below for more information. And thank you for helping us keep Texas families free.